friends and sirs, welcome to the Jarrett Bellman Show. We are located in our own homes and offices in order to continue safe work processes. My goal is to assist you in your personal and professional growth by talking to community leaders like our guest, Brian Bird. This episode is brought to you by Pro 16 Productions. Pro 16 Productions combines experience, passion, and innovation to capture the essence of your projects. Brian is a realtor with We Sail WNC team of Keller Williams Mountain Partners. Brian has been a part of the Hendersonville community for close to a decade. He has two sons at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, but most importantly, he has found a community that allows him to be as involved as he wants to be. Today, we are talking about Safe Hendo and Love Hendo, two initiatives that Brian has embraced and supported both in his speech, his actions, and his wallet. Welcome to the show, Be Squared. Thank you, Jared. Glad to be here. Appreciate the uh, gracious introduction. Oh, not a problem. Thank you for all that you do for our community. It, uh, I mean, we see your name everywhere, or you hope people see your name everywhere. But, uh, you know, I just love that, uh, like I said, you're not just speaking and, um, and acting it, but you, you've put some money into uh, the Safe Hendo and Love Hendo campaigns here. Well, you know, I've been, I've been blessed over the last few months to be able to make a living. And a lot of our friends and neighbors, Jared, have been struggling. Uh, they've either not been able to do their job or do it on a limited basis. Uh, many folks are unemployed and unsure about the future of their business and how long they can hold on. And uh, the, the efforts of all the folks involved in creating the Safe Hendo and Love Hendo formats, uh, the folks from the chamber, uh, their partners at uh, the Friends of Hendersonville, um, and the business owners like yourself uh, who have, you know, lent their time, their talents, um, and uh, their energy to figuring out how can we help each other and how can we step up and uh, keep this community together. And uh, I've been very impressed with not just what they're doing, um, but how they do it. Um, and uh, it's just a, a great opportunity to, uh, again, um, support uh, those folks who, who may not have, have had the couple of months that I've had in my business and uh, keep this train running. Well, that's great, Brian. We really appreciate it. So you're a realtor with We Sell WNC, uh, part of the Keller William uh, Mountain Partners team, uh, office over there. So uh, how's that going with everything uh, being quarantined? I know realtors have a lot of, uh, I want to say high, yeah, it's higher expectations because, you know, there's protections, which when we say protections, sometimes people get defensive, but these are protections to assist and help and keep people safe. So how's that going? Yeah, so, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's important to note that a part of our job is to take people into other people's homes um, or to allow other people to come into our clients' homes. And so this is, this is not only very personal, um, but it's, it's very important uh, that we immediately put in safe uh, practices to protect all involved, uh, the seller, the buyer, the other agents, our teams, our family. Uh, and so immediately we focused on, you know, what could we do? Uh, there was so much in March and April about what we can't do individually and as businesses and even as realtors. And we focused on what can we do? And so uh, one of the first things we did was put together a safe showings uh, document. So one page document that we share with all of our clients uh, regardless if they're buying or selling homes or land so that they understand that uh, this is first and foremost, uh, that uh, we want to help you. We want to educate you. We want to help you uh, reach those real estate goals, but we have to do it as safely as we can with the best knowledge that we have. And so it's, it sets expectations. Uh, it helps uh, uh, open up uh, opportunities for safe showing practices uh, virtual. Um, you know, it was always a best practice to have a video for a home, and now it's, it's a way we do business. You know, um, it's not that we're not taking people into properties, but the first thing we're doing is, is sending them as much information so that they can uh, really uh, pay attention to what are they going actually physically going to see. Um, uh, for listings, when we're helping someone sell a home and they're still occupying the home, uh, we switch to virtual open houses. Um, and so that uh, there was an opportunity for potential buyers and real estate agents to be able to really understand a property before they took that trip uh, to step inside of it. 
Um, and so just, you know, we, we hear the word pivot a lot and, and that's just what we focused on is what can we do safely um, and what can we be smart about and proactive uh, about helping um, make, make real estate move forward. Um, you know, when, when this came, you know, people's leases were ending or their homes had to be sold or their jobs were changing and that didn't change. And, and so, you know, housing is, is, is pretty important. And, uh, and so we've just been blessed uh, with the opportunity to help a lot of people during this, uh, during this different time. Well, that's great, Brian. I appreciate all that you guys are doing uh, for your clients and for the real estate community. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Love Hendo. Love Hendo was an initial campaign um, brought forth to promote safe shopping, um, get people back taking care because businesses were hit hard when the shutdowns came. Uh, so as things started to slowly open back up, uh, Love Hendo was born out of the uh, almost necessity to ensure that the community was supporting our businesses, um, which is, that's, that's been done in the past, right? In 07, 08, there were uh, shop and dine campaigns. I mean, some of the Love Hendo stuff has now transitioned into a, a shop and dine HC. Uh, if, if, if the listeners haven't looked, uh, really check out lovehendo.com. Uh, check out the Chamber Shop and Dine Henderson County uh, platform. But that has, uh, you know, you and I are, are, are Main Street Hendersonville loyals. Uh, but, um, but I'm also a Fletcher loyal. And so, uh, you know, Fletcher, Mills River, uh, Laurel Park, Flat Rock, they're all embracing this Shop and Dine Henderson County and the Love Hendo campaign as well. And, um, and the whole county's really come behind that. And I think that's, um, I don't want to say that was an easy step because it wasn't an easy step, but it was a, a pretty, pretty logistical next step. The, the safe hendo is something completely new and different. And I think that's where I've seen you really jump off and show your heart. Can you tell us about the safe hendo and what that means and what, that, um, what that's promoting? Sure. I mean, as you alluded to it, it it's evolved. And I think that uh, in, in March, when one of the first impacts on our community was things like restaurants immediately closing at a time when they're usually coming out of winter and, uh, and, and, and starting to uh, be able to recoup um, from being so slow over the winter. And, uh, you know, people like you and I who, who do business downtown and have offices downtown and are down there all the time, um, the, the, the Love Hendo uh, website was just an immediate resource. So you could understand who's open, who's not, who's doing curbside delivery, um, you know, who's got different hours, what specials are they offering? If you can't, you don't feel safe leaving your home, then don't order gift cards, spend money with them now that you'll use later because um, they need that influx of cash right now. And it, it was empowerment. It was empowerment for, you know, people all over the area to say, you know, I, I want to be able to spend locally, but I don't know how to do it. And I don't know how to do it safely. And, uh, sp- from from those activities, that education, right, of, of what you can, what can you do, came Safe Hendo. And it was really focusing on, uh, you know, how do you go about business? So, you know, Love Hendo was about where can you do business and keep that money locally to keep this economy and these families going. And then Safe Hendo was like, okay, what are the steps that you can take in order uh, to be able to do that safely? Um, and it, uh, you know, expanded into, you know, focusing on the three W's. Um, when the health experts and the state said, this is what's important right now, is that people wash their hands, wear a mask, and wait their turn. And so that was a great opportunity, again, to educate and empower people on how they can go about spending locally. And so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's grown and evolved. It was, you know, it was communication, it was signs, uh, and then, uh, you know, looking at ways of, of generating uh, opportunities for people to go downtown if they felt safe um, and how, how do they go about it and then if they don't feel right yet getting out of the home um, they can still participate um, and, uh, and and still be able to, uh, to, to to keep this community together and so many people and so many organizations and individuals and businesses and nonprofits have really uh, again spent their time money and energy and and trying to work together to figure this out and the collaboration has always been strong in this community. Um, but I think it's, you know, it's one of those examples that you can't always control what happens, uh, but you can control what you do about it and how you react. 
And overall, this community has reacted in a very collaborative way, looking for the, uh, the greater good and the greater gain. Uh, and it ha we haven't always made the right decisions and not everybody's happy about what we're doing, but we're doing something. Um, and it's definitely better than if we would have done nothing. Yeah, I think that um, the community has, I mean, even in our initial reaction to the lovehendo.com, I mean, that was just, that was more proactive than reactionary. I mean, it was just smart, a smart move that may not have been perfect in its first iteration, but has grown into something bigger. And I think you're exactly right that that collaboration and that looking to be one community instead of a bunch of individual businesses or individual consumers that uh, we can put together a plan that, like you said, not everybody is going to hundred percent agree with it, but as leaders in this community, we're going to say, this is right now what we think is best. And we're willing to reevaluate and we're really willing to relook at things. Um, so that's, that's great, Brian. Um, I think it's important to reiterate, you know, who really kicked this thing off and got it going. And you've got two organizations that are very event based, the Henderson County chamber, they do a lot, but they often, you know, their, their, their presence in the community is live events. And then you've got the friends of downtown again, live events is the, is the, it was the most important vehicle that they had. But the, the next best thing that they had is their resources and the people that believe and support them. And so that, that was the, you know, we talk about shifting your business, you know, that the, these great ideas and these great programs like Love Hendo and Safe Hendo came out of two organizations that were completely event-based and it went to, okay, well, we can't do that right now. What can we do? And I think that's important for every individual, every family and every business to think, you know, it's very easy to, uh, to be bombarded with what you can't do. And so once a week, I make a list of what I can do. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's a powerful statement. So let's talk. I'm going to, um, I know you don't like to do this, but I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and boost your ego a little bit here. I know you're a humble guy, but I want to talk about the things that you have done specifically. Um, you know, I know that, uh, initially you sponsored the markers on the, that people, businesses could put on their floors. What, uh, what are some other things that, uh, you have been willing to and purposefully sponsoring that, uh, that, you know, I don't want to say you're proud that your name's on it, but you're proud that this is able to be in our community. So what are some of those things? Sure. So uh, again, it was, it was, it was that chance to say, oh, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, my business is growing through all this. Um, uh, you know, March was very scary for everybody. April was a lot of work, but then June and July, you know, I, I started to actually make a living. And again, a lot of my friends and neighbors were, were either closed or struggling, uh, having to lay off people. And uh, when, when uh, I was already in the talks with the friends of downtown about supporting uh, uh, new sponsorships available for Rhythm and Brews. And so they said, hey, well, if, if you were interested in that, would, would you be willing to help us with, with this efforts? And uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a pleasure to be able to, to, to hear what they had to say because it came down to that communication piece, right? We've utilized the web. We're utilizing social media. Now we're going to have actual physical signs downtown that explain to people, welcome to Hendersonville. We're glad you're here. We appreciate that you're going to spend time and money in our, in our businesses and support our nonprofits. Here's how we would like you to go about it by following the three W's. And those signs aren't free. And so, uh, you know, uh, Printville uh, did a great job of uh, providing some quick turnaround uh, on creating this stuff. And they needed an underwriter to, to be able to infuse the program with money so we could get those signs printed as soon as possible and get them out there. And since then, it's evolved into the Stand Here stickers um, so that uh, as businesses are, are working hard to figure out how to allow people to social distance while they're waiting in line for curbside pickup, it's really simple. Stand here. This allows you to, to, to maintain your space from people and, and do it as safely as possible. Uh, the next opportunity was when the, when the uh, open streets concept was starting to be exper experimented with. They realized that folks were going downtown and spending money and social distancing, but a lot of this commerce was happening outside and people wanted to stick around because it was a great environment. And so they wanted to be able to sit down. And so they got a deal on some chairs and I was like, yeah, let's sign me up. Let's get some chairs down there. Um, let's, let's let people linger and, 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 and enjoy uh, this, this, this dynamic downtown in a way that uh, allows them to, to, to continue to try to be safe. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and it's just, it's just snowballed from there. 
Um, and it's, and it, again, it's, it, it wasn't, hey, businesses, this is what you got to do. It's like, hey, we're going to make these resources available to you, whether it be stickers or signs uh, or, you know, uh, Jared Bellman uh, supporting the, uh, the carry out so that we have these dedicated spaces to where someone who's trying to do the right thing and get in and get out and spend money locally has the opportunity to always have an open parking space to pull up and the businesses bring the food or the, or the merchandise right out to you. Um, and, and it's, again, it's, it's continued to evolve because these groups that are spearheading this continue to seek feedback from the guests, from the visitors, from the businesses, and, and, and just always looking to figure out how they can continue to support these businesses that are doing the best they can with this changing environment to not only stay in business, but to protect their employees, to protect their families, and to, to provide a brand new experience for their guests um, in a way that they've never had to do. Yeah, and that's the key is it's a brand new experience, you know, because we've you jokingly used the word pivot earlier, which is, you know, just a, a key phrase of 2020, but, but it is, it's, it's a, it's a new customer experience and it's not, you know, you can blame whatever or say whatever, but as businesses and as individuals, we should be creating new experiences all the time. Anyway, you know, uh, looking back and how we can take feedback, whether it's good feedback and let's do more of that, or, um, you know, you know, feedback that is, uh, you know, some, sometimes hard and not what you want to hear because you need improvement and, and changing that, um, that helps us uh, through everything. And so when things change, we need to change too. And I, I really, I do not have a big issue with change. I sometimes have the opposite where like, I want to change everything all the time. And so I need to like stick with some processes for a while. But, uh, but most people have a big issue with change. And so this has caused um, enough rub and friction to m- make people have to change because that rub and that friction uh, as an outside um, uncontrollable rub, you have no choice but to change. And so that pivot has to happen. So that's, that's a great point. Um, yeah. All choice is more than proud to sponsor the uh, carry out um, signage and uh, glad to help our restaurants and our local businesses. I love that. Even some of the retail shops are using them to let people drive up and drop stuff off. It's just a great thing that uh, was a great idea. And we were glad to work with Printful also to get those signs out there. Uh, so yeah, if you see the beard, let me know the beard logo on there. And if, uh, if you see Brian's logo on there, if you see uh, the blue step sign, uh, uh, markers to, to space, if you see the chairs with his um, information on there, reach out to Brian, just say thank you. I think that's something that uh, a lot of people, um, I don't know. I don't want you to take it for granted. I want, uh, and Brian doesn't want the thank you, but I think that it's good for us to thank people. Um, so take the time to reach out to, uh, we sell WNC to Brian specifically and just say, Hey, thanks for this small thing. That, uh, is a big thing. Uh, you know, and, uh, we want to continue doing this. I know Brian and I are both, uh, very passionate about the safe Hendo, um, you know, Brian from his heart for his community, me for, uh, both my heart for the community. And as it, you know, uh, Brian's inviting people into our community and that's his job and that's what he's proud of. And I'm like, Hey, let's protect this community. And so we both have our views and, uh, you know, from a business sense, it may be a little different, but from a personal sense, it really is our heart. So Brian, tell me, uh, you know, you are a huge influence on this community, a huge, um, you know, it's just something you take a lot of pride in is uh, being part of this community. Just why, why did that become a thing? I mean, you've been here for a decade. You didn't grow up here. Uh, why is Hendersonville, Henderson County become such an important part of your life? I kind of grew up everywhere. Uh, I'm from Memphis, but I didn't grow up there. I moved here from Philadelphia, but I'm not from there. Yeah. And so I've, I've been able to live a lot of neat places and meet a lot of neat people. Um, but I've never felt a part of something because I was always the new guy that moved out. And, and this, this community is different. Um, I specifically came here because I grew up, no matter where I lived, I always went to the Smoky Mountains for, for vacation. So for me, it was just about the, the environment that we're in. Um, and uh, I didn't see Hendersonville coming. I didn't know it existed. And I had done three years of research, uh, figuring out where I could live at the time with an airport close to the Smoky Mountains. Um, if I did that same research today, I would have no trouble finding uh, Hendersonville on the internet uh, based on the work of uh, you know, the, the chamber and the city 
and the TDA, um, you know, we're on the map now, but back then, you know, I, I really didn't know it existed. And I think it, it, I think it found me and it's always neat to hear people's Hendersonville stories. Um, and so uh, th this is a place where, you know, again, you can get as involved as you want to be. And uh, if, if there's, there's, there's civic organizations, there's uh, business organizations, there's, there's ways for you to learn what's going on, learn who's doing it, and then find your way and your place on how you can uh, make a difference. And uh, again, I, I love collaboration. I love learning from people. And so this is a, this is a great place to do that. Uh, I think it's important to note that, you know, I had alluded to the fact that the last few months have been uh, very blessed for, for me and my team uh, in, the, in the amount of business that we've done. Um, I've, had a, I've, had a, I've had the opportunity to help a lot of people buy and sell real estate over the last three months through all of this. Uh, so far, uh, it's, it's all been people here. So yeah, there's a lot of people that wanna, that wanna visit and we do have a lot of out-of-town clients that we still stay in touch with through Zoom and through phone and through email and by sending them videos. Uh, if there's not a video listed with a home, we'll go out and take one for them and put boots on the ground and tell them about the house. Um, but at this point, um, all this, all this uh, uh, blessing that I felt um, has been from people right here. Um, so it's not just folks moving in from out of town. It's people here that are you know, tired of renting or they have a house that's too small or too big. And, you know, being able to help them right here um, is, has been a joy. That's awesome. Well, thank you. We're, we as a community are grateful for your influence in here. So on the Jared Bellman Show, I ask every guest the same three questions. So we're going to dig into that a little bit. I love to hear uh, these responses. This wasn't in the prep. This, yeah, no, we, don't, we don't send this ahead of time. So the first question is, what is a book that you have read in the last six months that has been uh, the most influential to you? I would have to say uh, The Last Lecture by Randy Pausch. And I've read it in the last six months because I make a point to read it every year to remind me the subtitle of the story um, is, uh, is about living your childhood dreams. And uh, it's, a, it's a short read, it's a powerful read. Um, there's also a YouTube video that you can watch so you can find out if the book's right for you. Um, but it's a, it's a nice reminder um, to, uh, to focus, uh, not on how did I get here, but Hey, uh, now that I'm here, what, what can I do with it? Yeah, that's a great book. It's actually sitting on my bookshelf here in my office. So that's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a great one. Yeah. So the last lecture, if you haven't read it, uh, go out and run out and get that now. Cause it's a good read. And, and like you said, it's a quick read. It's not, it's not a difficult intense read and it's, it's powerful. And you can watch the nine minute version of the last lecture that spawned the book on yes. YouTube just by yeah. typing in last lecture. Yeah. Well, great answer. Great, great book. Um, second question. What is something in the last six months you've had to say no to? And I'm going to qualify this because the last eight have said staying at home or, you know, doing business differently. So I'm going to, I'm going to put that out. You can't say networking and events and you can't say working from home. So what is something that you've had to say no to? Wow. Um, well, I, I guess it goes back to that whole thing is you can be as involved as you want to be and can be. Um, and I uh, had the opportunity to, uh, uh, to be a part of the Hendersonville Rotary Club. Uh, we have a lot of great social and, and, and uh, um, civic organizations that do a lot of good work in this community. And uh, when I was an employee for WTZQ Radio, they gave me an opportunity to be a member of that club for three years and contribute and represent the station and really learn more about the community. It was like a crash course in who's doing what. Um, and uh, when I transitioned uh, full-time into real estate, I needed to take a break. Um, and it's one of those things, again, I was blessed with a lot of good things that I could choose to do with my time and energy. And I, I, and I, I will most likely return to the Rotary Club at some point, but I have to say, you know what? Um, you guys keep doing the good work and I'll stay in touch and I'll follow what you're doing. Um, but I need to focus right now on, uh, on, on being able to be, uh, to make the most of this opportunity I have uh, to be directly connected with folks like the city and the chamber and, and be able to work with them on things that are, are very present. Not that what the Rotary Club is not important. Uh, they do wonders for education and clean water in our community, but I had to say, you know what, not now. Yeah, and I think that's a great statement because not only did you say what you said no to, but you had, you said yes to something. Because when you say 
yes to something, you're saying no to something else. So if you were to say yes to Rotary, you would probably be saying no to increased involvement in chamber and business organizations. Um, and it's just, it's a decision that as business leaders we have to make. I wasn't wanting to take that energy and time and sit on the couch. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't, yeah, I didn't think that you'd be uh, just lounging around in your extra time. But, but, uh, but yeah, no, I, and, and that's, those are the difficult conversations when, and like you said, in this community, there's so many positive organizations and activities to be involved in. You can't, you can't do it all. And so you have to pick and choose uh, what boards you're part of, what nonprofits you support. Um, you know, I wish I had enough money to support them all, um, but I don't. So um, they feel it though. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. So last question: If I were to give you a billboard, and millions and millions and millions of people were going to see this billboard, what would you put on it? Uh, that's a good one. Um, a billboard and millions of people are going to see it. If you can spend locally in a safe manner, do it now. Relevant. Love it. Yeah, that's good. It's like you've been in marketing your whole life. <laughs> and, and it doesn't matter where that is. Yeah. You know, I'm not just saying spend all your money in Hendo. Where, wherever your community is, they need you. They need your attention. And if you can just try to spend $1 more tomorrow that you were already going to spend, but spend it with a local business, it makes a difference. That's awesome. Well, B-Squared, I am so grateful that you were able to spend some time with us on the Jarrett Bellman Show. Thank you for joining us today. Truly my pleasure, sir. Thank you very much for all that you do in our community. And I appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk about this cool stuff in our community on your show. Thank you for watching The Jared Bellman Show. Be sure to hit subscribe, ring the bell for future notifications, and check out the description for more information.